So I've been using my wireless grocery barcode scanner for about a week now to do grocery inventory, and it's working really well. There's a couple of friction points that I wanted to sort out. Um, number one was rapidly scanning stuff. So I'd find that sometimes if I scan stuff rapidly, like that rapidly, uh, it wouldn't work. And I investigated, oh, you can see it works now. Um, I investigated and found that the uh, serial mod the serial signal from the barcode scanner was just sending a really long barcode because it was just joining them all together. Uh, so to fix that, I instructed the barcode module inside here to delimit the barcodes that it sends with a tab character, and then adjusted the code in here to break on the tab character. So now you can scan stuff as fast as you like, and uh, it doesn't miss anything. So stuff at zero, one, two, three, four, five and it captures them all and makes sure that it doesn't miss any. Uh, that required changing the configuration of the barcode scanner. Now it turns out there's two different configuration sets in here. There's the one on the carrier board and then there's one on the module itself. And because we are looking at the output from the module itself, uh, changing the configuration on the carrier board does nothing for us. So there's a, an end mark section of the barcode scanner manual that is insufficient because that inserts the tab character at the end of the signal that it sends to the keyboard uh, via Bluetooth or USB. It doesn't change the configuration of the actual module you can see in the front there. To do that, I pulled up the GM67 uh, manual and it's got loads of extra uh, configuration in here you can, you can play with. And one of those is the tab character or carriage return, carriage return line feed, blah, 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 blah. Um, so I, I, uh, I clipped that out and put it in the docs so you just need to scan that, and then that makes the, the module send the tab character, so you can rapidly scan stuff. Uh, the next pain point was a bit of a technical one with um, the count reading out. So at, after an operation, I can add or a subtract or a, a zero. Uh, I ask Grossi, hey, how many of those do we have in stock now? And uh, it, was, it would send a response, but it would send all of the... Uh, product data that it had on that product. I'm only interested in the count. Uh, so for example, this bottle of milk here uh, had a lot of different barcodes associated with it, and the message that Grossi sent back was quite big. And so we'd scan it, and uh, it wouldn't work. No, it doesn't like the reflective screen. Um, the response that Grossi would send back would include all of the barcodes, and that was too big to fit in the memory. So I had to do a bit of fiddling and use a bit more memory and now it can handle those very big responses, uh, which is good. Now, the last thing I wanted to look at was improving the, um, the failure mode handling. So previously, if there was any sort of error that cropped up during a scan, you just get a question mark on the screen, uh, which is not great. Uh, so now, if you scan a, a barcode that it doesn't know about, you get a, a bar error uh, rather than just a generic question mark. Um, so you also get a net error if you have the um, like the bad Wi-Fi connection or if uh, you know your grossy API key or URL is wrong or that sort of stuff. But now it's a lot more troubleshootable because you can just see, oh, bar error, I must not have put in the barcode for that product yet. Um, but otherwise, it's going great. I made a little charging dot for it in the kitchen out of some sort of moldable thermoplastic stuff. Looks like garbage, um, but it, it does the job. And I blue tack that down to the bench. I think I might revisit that with some nicer 3D printing or something. Okay, that's it. Bye-bye.